Three years in charge at Derby County and Rams manager Jim Smith have led the club on a dramatic upward path. Promotion from the first division in Jimmy's first season had been followed by a respectable 11th place in the Premiership at the first attempt. And as the manager and his team saluted the Pride Park crowd after the 1-0 defeat of Liverpool in the final match of the 1997-98 season, the progress had continued, as Derby finished ninth in the world's most competitive football league. So what of 1998-99? The pride and the passion instilled into the Rams by English football's longest serving manager would have to be maintained if further improvements were to be achieved. Off the field, the splendid Pride Park Stadium further enhanced before the end of 1998 with the opening of the South West Corner, a £3 million development which took the stadium's capacity past 33,000 and earned Pride Park a place on the initial category A-list for the England 2006 World Cup campaign. The summer of 98 had seen the Rams smash their transfer record when they paid £2.7 million for Argentinian defender Horacio Carbonari. The man known as Pataco, translated into English as Bazooka because of his Thunderbolt shot, added to the cosmopolitan flavour of Jim Smith's squad. As did German wing-back Stefan Schnorr, secured on a free transfer under the Bosnum ruling from SV Hamburg. But the unexpected success of the early part of the season was undoubtedly goalkeeper Russell Holt, who emerged from the large shadow of Derby's Estonian international keeper Mark Form to claim the number one spot. You know, I've been performing well all season. It was probably the best I've ever played since I've been here, since the promotion season. But, uh, you know, that's football, isn't it? One in, one out. It's the one that always stands out for the first game at Blackburn, one where it's bounced and then just kicked off to, the, to my left. Um, there's always that one, and then there's the one around the post from uh, Van Oydonk later on in the season. Record signing Carbonari opened his account with a free kick goal in the early August Derbyshire Centenary Cup encounter with Chesterfield. But the Rams eventually needed a penalty shootout against their second division opponents to retain the annual trophy. Four days later, a full moon in a dramatic August night sky shone down on a star-studded Barcelona team as they took on the Rams in front of a packed Pride Park crowd. 2-1 up at half-time, the Spanish giants turned on the heat after an hour with the introduction of their World Cup stars Rivaldo, Zenden, Reisiger, Koku and Giovanni. And it was Giovanni's ball on 74 minutes which resulted in an own goal and a 3-1 victory for Barcelona. Now for the serious business of the Premier League. Blackburn Rovers, uh, first game of the season. Bit of a surprise for me to be involved. And uh, we got a 0-0 a nil -nil draw, which uh, we thought Blackburn at the time could have been a good side at the start of the season. But uh, there was a bit of action at each end. And uh, we come out with a 0-0 nil -nil draw. Here's Jeff Kenners throwing down the right-hand side for Rovers. Cleared away as far as Flickcroft. Flickcroft into the centre, Sutton away from his market. Tries to shot Chris Sutton. And it's into the side netting away by Larson again and then a mistake by Peacock and a chip comes in and it's only a couple of yards wide from Sturridge looking to one shot, one shot up against Onsho, what's he going to do here, he's gone past Onsho now into the penalty area, two weight in the centre, the ball in is a little bit over here, Dilap gets it back inside again asking for handball, the header by, by Peacock, oh it could have sneaked in if John Fylland hadn't have been alert Wilcox then with the in-swinger from the right-hand side. Deeper one this time. Header by Rovers player Holt. Good save by the keeper again. Just palmed it away from the centre. 24,007 inside Ewell Park this afternoon. Here comes the derby throw. Brought down towards Carsley. Deflected on the way. And it's thankfully for John Fylden. It took quite enough of the pace off it for him to have time to readjust his feet and go down. But the first goal was crucial. The first goal might be the only goal we get here this afternoon. Show it again to Flickcroft. Is he going to line it up for a shot? Yes, yes, from distance. Not about one alley by Holt. You can see Gary Flickcroft arching his body ready for the shot. And once again, Russell Holt has kept it at nil-nil. The annual team photo call was staged in advance of the first home game of the season against Wimbledon. And there were some notable absentees in the lineup. Stalwart first teamers Robbie van der Laan, Dean Yates and Chris Powell had all left the club during the summer. 
Gary Rowett moved on as the new season kicked off and now came the news that Christian Daly, who had turned out for Derby at Blackburn Rovers, had been bought by the Ewood Park Club for a staggering £5.3 million. Jim Smith lined up an immediate replacement by snapping up Spencer Pryor from Leicester City and in the next couple of months he would further strengthen his squad with the arrival of Kevin Harper from Hibs and the experienced former Aston Villa Chelsea Leeds and England win back Tony Dorigo. But back to the photo call and this is what happens when you let Dion Burton play with the camera. In an ideal world, you wanted to get all your deals done prior to the pre-season and everything set in place. Certainly, but with a fortnight be, you know, before the game is seriously kicked off, uh, and that didn't happen. And suddenly, the the, wire, the, the wires have been red hot. And uh, as, as you see, that uh, Gary has gone to Birmingham. Um, Christian, as we stand here now, has gone to uh, Blackburn Rovers for, you know. Uh, between them a total of six and a half, nearly six and a half million pounds and uh, you know he's, he's sad in one way because uh, both good young men and, and, and good players to have around but uh, I need to strengthen the, the squad. I think we have cover at the centre-backs position with Igor staying and Gabonari coming in, Jakob uh, uh, and uh, Spencer Pryor, uh, Pryor and, uh, Pryor and uh, obviously young Steve Yellett who we think uh, He's, he's, he's made a good strides forward and will contend that left-hand side since our spot this year. So uh, it was an area that we've got strength when they're all fit and allows me to have money, all the money, to go and obviously strengthen the squad. First home game, it's Wimbledon. Uh, we've just lost Christian Daly to Blackburn, but we've gained uh, Spencer Pryor at the back and uh, he came in and done a good job. We've uh, Igor played his first game and uh, had a chance in at the bar, uh, but we... Uh, Fortunately, we couldn't score and we ended up with a 0 0 draw. Oh, good win by Carsley. This is one shot. He's got Sturridge just inside. Beautiful flick on to Carsley and the shot coming in to Sullivan. Now then, can they open up the defence here? A lot of movement off the ball. It's turned in behind, but chance to still uh, set it up here. Oh, Sturridge! Almost there, not quite. Oh, see, see a little ball here this afternoon. Set. D that. Nicely into space again. Sturridge doing a lot of running off the ball. Here he is, forging his way through. Oh, was that a trip by Roberts? No, says the referee. Still no score here. One shot. Sturridge, good turn. Oh, took a dive there. Picked up by Bohinen. Being a force wide, though. In comes the ball. One shot with the header. Oh, it's there. Well, backs up on the far side. Still no score. Well, Derby County throwing everything at uh, Wimbledon at the moment. Here's Carsley. Lap. Good header! Just past the post. Sturridge so close yet again. And Derby continuing to press, but uh, stout defending again from this Wimbledon side. One shot, spreading it well. Not a bad ball in. Oh, and off the top of the crossbar this time. The Rams have only won one of their six home games against Wimbledon. And the Dons doing it again victory back in October 88. Carsley. Again the long ball through the oh, little push there. One chance. The referee has blown his whistle. One shot pushing Kenny Cunningham out of the way before he made contact with the ball. And he's arguing his case but uh, Mr Winter the referee will have none of it. There was the push. You saw it clearly. Still nil-nil. 
Right, we're uh, back off up to Middlesbrough. Uh, last time we were up there we didn't do too well. Um, this time we uh, managed to come out with a result, but uh, it weren't exactly what we wanted. Uh, Paolo scored an early goal. Uh, we thought we might be able to hold on, but early in the second half we conceded one. But uh, better off this year than we were last year because uh, we actually sustained a result. Here's Bohinen, aimed at one shot. Oh, keeper and defender confused, the ball's loose. One shot will get to this. Goal is given. Derby County take the lead with half an hour gone. And it's Paolo one shot's first strike of the season after having two goals disallowed in the match against Wimbledon. Well, Schwarzer came off his line but neither he nor defender made a, a tidy job of it. What they've got to do is work the ball forward, maybe like that for Merson. Here comes the substitute. <laughs> Hamilton Ricard makes it 1-1. The Borough game was England under-21 central defender Steve Elliott's first start of the campaign and one of Derby's young stars was left to reflect on his progress through the ranks from boot room to first team. Yeah, doing boots was great. I used to clean uh, Nick Wrights and Van der Laan's when I was an apprentice, which was, uh, was a good job, yeah, I enjoyed it. Now, you're a Derby fan, of course, right from the beginning, but is there another club you like to play for, or is this your ultimate ambition? Now I'm happy at Derby. I've always been happy at Derby, and um, I'm Derby through and through. I've got black and white blood, if you like, and um, I've never thought of moving. I've never wanted to move now. I've always just wanted to play for Derby, yeah. So you're writing your diary of the season, come next May it'll be full. What, as we stand here now, will be the entries that you've had so far? Uh, I think um, playing against Middlesbrough, my uh, first game of the season, uh, first start, playing against the likes of Gascoigne, Merson, that, that, that would be uh, one of the top things so far this season. But coming on against Blackburn, the very first game, um, was a good start for me and I was happy that I was involved. And tell us about your England under-21 career, how's that going? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, it was a nice end to the season last season and um, we ended up playing um, three games for England in the Toulon tournament away and uh, Robbie Kozluk was there as well, which is a good help and um, hopefully yeah, I'll keep that going. Yeah. OK, now we're back home. We've got Sheffield Wednesday. Uh, first win of the season, three points. Um, typical uh, centre forward, maybe offside, maybe not, but uh, as a centre forward I tell you, all, all goals count, so three points in the bag. Pryor just laying it forward, good uh, ball again from Sturridge, one shot, Sturridge, oh, can't stand the fingers of Pressman. Christmas team still looking for their uh, first win of the season, very close to a goal there. Perhaps throw, got some distance. But look at this control, immaculate turn and a super finish. So following on for the first home win, we've got Charlton away and we've uh, really doubled our points. We've got another three points down at Charlton with Chris Powell in the opposition this year. Um, but we uh, conceded a late goal which was a bit disappointed from my point of view to a very dubious penalty. Turn there from uh, Piano. One shot with a touch. Sturridge. Piano just can't get there, but Derby County is still in possession. Chance here, maybe. One shot. One nil. Five minutes on the clock, and Derby County take the lead at the Valley. His third goal of the season. Oh, a top athletic under pressure again. Being given. Storage going down. Oh, Storage, good run that from him. Larson in amongst the pack there. Now then, can Derby make something of this? 
Diano. Oh! And it's just stood and watched. And Diano planted it in the top right hand corner as smoothly as anything. Right on the hour is Charlton Mill, Derby County 2. Just look at this, beautifully placed over the wall, and the goalkeeper could do nothing. Charlton trying to get back. Maybe, oh, he's given the penalty. Well, Clive Mandonka will take it. Steemach arguing the case, but it's no good once the decision's been given. And uh, Carsley not happy either. Clive Mendonca then to make it Charlton 1, Derby County 2. A goal from Paolo Wanchop at Main Road after a one-all home leg draw saw the Rams progress in the Worthington Cup against Man City, but defeated home to Arsenal in the next round left Derby to concentrate on the league. And now it's to Leicester City, a bit of a grudge match between the two teams, uh, especially after last year with a bit of a disappointing uh, result we had. We got a uh, good lead uh, first half with uh, Stefan Schnorr, um, buried it with his left foot into the bottom corner and uh, we carried on really, we just went from strength to strength and um, Paolo snuck one in second half just to wrap it up and we come out with a, a good victory with uh, three points. Put a tight rein on Guppy. He's such a good crosser of the ball. Not allowing him to uh, get away. Stefan Schnoor, anyway, with the free kick here. Dangerous ball in, flicked on. Oh! Casey Keller didn't look too happy with that. The American goalkeeper, Spencer Pryor, very close, as the big grin suggests. But a good ball in from Schnoor. And uh, Pryor got the flick on there. Just past the post. Leicester City, of course, uh, going well. There's another of those good crosses from Guppy. Oh, push in the back there. Is that a penalty or not? No, says the referee. And uh, Leicester protests. So back come Derby County again. Savage chasing back, but he's not going to get to that one. Oh, he got a touch. Oh, play on, says the referee. Nice little ball there from Schnur. Power with a shot. Not far away from that far post. Carol Powell, very close there to opening the score. Nice ball that from uh, Schnur. He controlled it well, played it into the path of Powell. And just off target. Elliot. Again. Closing the door quickly. Free kick just outside the box, I think. Stubby's brought down. His feet were definitely outside the box. It's a yellow card for Sinclair. Sturridge turning inside. Definite body check there. And uh, just another yard, and that would have been a penalty. It's a free kick just on the 18-yard line. What can they do here? And he knew with his back to us. Nice touch. Oh, crossbar! Well, what a let-off for Leicester City. Casey Keller, all at sea there as that ball came across. It was deflected onto the crossbar. Ross and the a few words there we'll see it on the replay here I think it came off Matt Elliott the uh, big centre back yes oh good header from him and, uh, Pesky couldn't uh, make much of that chance here <laughs> turned away beautifully by Russell Holt Russell Holt called into uh, action there by Stuart Campbell it's a beautiful run Good shot from Campbell. Hit it firmly with the meat of the boot. But a great save from Holt. Heskey. There goes Savage. Good on the ball is Savage. Just couldn't find the space through there. Good work here by Bohina. Beautiful ball inside for Sturridge. Harvey County. His 
Derby 1, Leicester City 0, 34 minutes. Well, super shot that. Casey Keller nowhere near it. And uh, once again, Dean Sturridge involved, causing all sorts of problems to this Leicester defence. Whipped the ball back and the shot lashed into the net. Derby controlling the game now. Bohinen, another measured ball from Bohinen. Bohinen again opening up the space. Couldn't get to it. Might do this time. Oh, oh! What about that? One shot. One of his magical finishes. On. Derby lead Leicester City by two goals to nil and you won't see a better finish than that 1-0 one shot providing the dramatic climax here what a finish oh, Derby County uh, well in the driving seat now Smith still uh, issuing instructions. Neil Lennon on the ball. This has gone. He's given away a free kick there. The uh, Irish international midfielder doesn't look too happy about it. Bohinen's free kick headed away by Elliot. Bohinen again. Good control. Oh, not a bad effort that. And tipped over by Casey Keller. That's Bohinen playing the Giants' role there. Free kick headed out by Elliott. What control this was, and a good effort. Esky uh, playing it inside. Wild challenge coming in there, and uh, a free kick for the foul on Wilson. Guppy will take it. Left foot expert. Might go for a top corner. He does so, and. Uh, Russell Holt read it brilliantly. Good save by the keeper. Ball was lined up well. He covered it well. I'm still as uptight as ever, as obviously. We've lost the game. And, um, and that's the way it goes. What are your thoughts on the game? Is it possible to have considered reflections at this stage for you? I think it's very difficult to do that, you know. I think that... Um, I felt that, and I think everybody in the ground felt that we should have had a penalty. It's a big important moment in the game. I've just come out to see the referee. He said he couldn't see it. The linesman on the far side said he thought it might have been a penalty but couldn't give it. Funnily enough, the linesman on this side has ventured in to say it was a clear-cut penalty. On, on those things, matches are finally decided. I'll tell you what, if it had happened the other way, Jim wouldn't have been too happy about it. You know, At that stage of the game, we were playing reasonably well in the match, and within, uh, within 10 minutes there's a goal at the other end, and it turns the game. Derby are a strong side, very, very strong side, and it was hard for us to peg them back. They scored just after half-time. We've thrown a lot of things in it, but eventually we didn't have the guile to, to break them down. Flying high at the minute, second in the league. We're playing Aston Villa, top of the table. And uh, we were a bit disappointed with the result at the end of the day. I was been uh, fell behind to a Paul Merson goal uh, late on in the, in the first half. But um, all credit to the lads, we come through it. And uh, you know, second is the highest we've ever been in the Premier League. Villa with the first corner. Russell Holt comes outside his six yard box and claimed it very well. And good distribution too, to Lars Bohinen, who looks for Sturridge on that right-hand side. Derby just short of players and support for the moment. Kept in play by Sturridge, out by Southgate. Here's one shot, maybe to strike from deep. Oh, an excellent strike! Somehow Mark Bosnich managed to fumble it out, but it had real venom. And the Aston Villa goalkeeper who's kept five clean sheets in six games this season with an early test, just over three minutes played. Bahinen. 
Oh, that falls to Paul Merson. He's going to run in on Russell Holt. Villa on top of the Premiership with 14 points. Take the lead against second place Derby County after 14 minutes. Oh, dispossessed though by Bohinen, who's just got Dean Sturridge ahead of him. Here's Sturridge, pursued by Barry, who did enough to get in the challenge. One chop. Oh, he's got a corner, signalled by Steve Dunn. Out to Alan Wright. Chance of a cross. That's a good one. Thompson. Gets the better of Delap. Thompson into the six yard box. It was the effort of Julian Jochim, which hit the chest of Russell Holt. Alan Thompson. There's a bit of space for Thompson here. And that trusty left foot. What a shot he's got in that boot. Well, this match into a fifth minute of added on time, but there is no more. No one would guess from its rather bland exterior that the Rams training ground hides a high-tech secret. Sports psychologist Bill Bezik explains the mysteries of the pro zone. We've instituted a sort of transition zone in this room where players come in, 10.30 is the time they report, they report to this room, at the least we'll give them the program for the day and we'll explain to them what we want from each practice, the quality issues that we're dealing with today. Uh, at the most, as you saw today, the manager will come in and he'll make some uh, comments about overall progress and I may be asked to speak on a specific issue. So, for example, I took today responsibility. You've been here before. I don't know why you get so anxious about taking responsibility. You've done it since you were eight. You are trained football players. A game out there for you is another day at the office for most people. Trust your experience. You've been there, you've done it. You've scored great goals, you've made great runs. That doesn't go away. It doesn't go away. You'll have your bad times, but you don't lose that. What you lose is your commitment to do it. Well, the ProZone chairs are designed uh, specifically uh, for both warm-up and rehabilitation. And while we've been talking, those chairs have been doing their work. And to an extent, uh, the players are beginning the warm-up process, the physical warm-up process, which will now carry on uh, in the first 15 to 20 minutes outside on the, on the pitch. The margin between success and failure is so small that if you can attend to details that that allow you to be successful, however small they are, they become very important. They may seem small details. And I do think that Derby um, have been successful in the last three years, not necessarily with the greatest talent in the league, but definitely with its preparation and attention to detail. So small things, but could be very important come the end of the season. For example, taking care of our foreign players, making them feel at home. If we, having a translator here makes them feel better, and if makes them feeling better makes them play better, money in the bank. Motivation by way of the pro zone is one thing, but against Spurs in early October, the Rams came up against another factor, the lucky charm of new boss, George Graham. Derby County with the uh, chance to uh, take the lead here. So uh, a good position for the free kick. This is Gobanari. Oh! Well taken by Bardson. Not only did he get there, but he made it stick. The ball angled round the wall. And he clutched it well. On the top again. One shot. He provides some magic here. Got the shot in! A busy man. Again, keeping the ball close to him. Long ball over the top is uh, causing problems for Spurs defence. Well wide. Barson threw him 
himself, but uh, Leano right off target there. Doheenan. Garsley. Nice ball into the path of a Schnorr. Oh! Smashed away by Barsen at the last moment. Good strike for the uh, defender. Derby continuing to uh, harass this Spurs defence. Nice interplay. This is Biano again. Trying to work a shooting space. Headed into one shot, but it wasn't the best of passes, but Derby still in possession. Carsley got a touch. Bohinen! Oh! And he does like having to go, doesn't he? Bohinen. Lars Bohinen letting fly there. David Pleat. moment one shot oh. no, Barson is not happy with the defending in front of him one shot given the opportunity there Bohinen Barson denying him again oh, the only player to be an ever present in this first side trying to forge his way down that uh, right hand side a fair challenge but uh, it's gone against him right on the hour here and uh, still Derby County nil Tottenham Hotspur nil oh it's there Sol Campbell the scorer Spurs have taken the lead tricky trip up north uh, off to Newcastle uh, with Rude Hullick back in charge up there we've just got uh, a few uh, things to prove to the fans and the players have got a few things to prove to him so uh, we thought we might get something out there but uh, unfortunately we didn't get anything uh, with only Dion scoring later on in the second half which uh, thought it might have lifted us but unfortunately we uh, ended up travelling home with a bit of a sulk on his face. Well, that's rather short from Davizas, Sturridge looking to profit, Bayano is the supporting player, Sturridge still on a solo run here and he smacked it one but just couldn't get the accuracy it needed. Pierce. Solano coming in on the back post, but Powell was in no mood to take any chances. Corner kick to Newcastle, though. Corner was taken quickly and short. Solano into the middle there. It's a goal! And it's Gabby's ass who's done it! Now Solano has got some room to motor. Glass is streaking down the left. Solano has seen him, that's a good ball. And Glass is on to it, there's a real chance here. Splendid goal! Steven Glass! That's his first. Sturridge, right in quick again. One chop. Davizas couldn't reach that one. One chop, first time. It was a really good strike as well from Paolo, one chop. Difficult man to deal with, deceptive. Sturridge, you know all about his pace, but one shot two can eat up the ground. He was fairly wide. Genuine power on that shot, well dealt with by Shea Given. Powell trying to keep it going Derby's way. The tackle was extremely late and straight away. Davizas puts his hand up and says, did he really need the booking? Mr. Bird's deciding it did. Again, it's hit deep. One chop got up to it. That's in the back of the net. They will have turned out to be their own goal. Well, it's a goal for Derby all the same. Sturridge goes back looking pleased with himself. But it wasn't quite as simple as that. Good knock back into the middle. Might have been Stephen Glass that he came off. Tony DiRigo was brought in to bolster the squad after three consecutive defeats. But nothing to worry about, it was only Manchester United next. So how would the Rams typically prepare for a big game? First team coach Steve McLaren explains how. This week we're playing uh, Manchester United. We, we studied videos of them. Uh, we saw the, the game last week that they played and we got a video of the, the game at Bromby. So we look at our strengths and weaknesses work on them in the week 
uh, look at Manchester's and really work out a game plan, formulate a game plan uh, as what we're going to do on a Saturday uh, to play Man United. But how are the players facing up to the challenge? We asked Spencer Pryor, but first Lee Carsley gives a unique insight. Hold it here, yeah. Hello. Are you ready then? Cast no shadow. <laughs> Carsley, how important is someone like <laughs> Dean <Dimitri? laughs> Is that really? Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> Spencer, I've got to mention Man United's last two results, five and a six. They're scoring a few goals. Are you going to stop them? Well, a lovely time to play them, isn't it? Uh, they're in good form, but uh, we're optimistic. We'll go in there and, and we'll enjoy the game and hopefully we'll come away with three points. Um, you know, we all know what Manchester United are about and hopefully we can give a good account of ourselves. Cole and York are certainly getting some sort of a partnership up front now. Does that worry you at all? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does, to be honest. No, it's that. Uh, um, they're, they're great players, but, we, you know, we are playing against Alan Shearer and, uh, last week and we're coming up against top quality strikers virtually every game now. Yeah? So, you know, it's nothing, it's nothing new, but, yeah, they are in good form at the moment, but hopefully we can stop them. How do you feel about the confidence that the manager's placed in you? He's given you the skipper's armband when Eagle's not about, and you might have felt when he came in that you've got a job to do, but maybe not a sort of an every, every match job. Oh, I'm enjoying the challenge. It's, um, it's, it's an honour to, to have led the lads out for a few games, and, you know, I think Eagle might be back at the weekend, but um, I've, I've certainly enjoyed it, and uh, it's, it's a job that I'd do again if, if I was asked to do. Saturday afternoon, it's a very wet and windy Saturday afternoon and we understand the kickoff uh, delayed by around about 15 minutes today because of the, the heavy traffic load around the stadium here at Pride Park. Uh, that gives us a little more opportunity to talk to people like Gordon Hill, who I bumped into walking along the corridors here at Pride Park. Gordon, a uh, familiar face to Manchester United and Derby fans, uh, welcome to Pride Park. You've been here before? No, this is the first time I've been here, Ivan, actually. Uh, I, I found my way here through a submarine. I felt like Jack Cousteau coming across the tops. Uh, we finally got here, and uh, it's an impressive stadium, to say the least. And um, uh, the baseball ground had a lot of good memories and a lot of fond memories for me, but, I mean, this is absolutely superb. Jim's got a good squad here. I mean, uh, one chop is, a, is an excellent player, and I tell you what, give him half a yard, and he'll smack the ball in the back of the Remember net. Remember that debut goal against United at Old Trafford oh, about a year ago? Yeah, yeah. tremendous. So, you, you know... Uh, if you remember rightly as well, at the beginning of the season, Derby are right up there. It was only in the last couple of games that they've slipped. So it's not saying anything to, it's not like a Wimbledon repeat. I would think that it would be a very close, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, confrontation because you've got quality on both sides. Uh, Derby, I've seen Derby a few times. I've watched them in the training sessions. Um, they, 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 tend to, they tend to play a certain style. Uh, they tend to play to the big fella and rightfully so. When, you, when you've got somebody of that calibre that can put the ball in the back of the net, then I think that's, uh, you know, that's a bonus for them. They have a good record here at Pride Park. Rather dented by defeat in their last home game against Tottenham. But overall, it's been a difficult place for visiting teams to come to. Here's Burton. Delap. And the lob! Well, Schmeichel was worried enough because he stood rooted to the spot. And it took a deflection. And that deflection was what carried it wide of the upright. York stumbled in an inopportune moment. Carsley went through the challenge of Giggs. Powell. And here's Burton, there's no flag. It's tight in there with Brown and Schnorr. Skied it. And on commentating duties today, a player who played for both these sides, Gordon Hill. Dorigo. In for one shot. And that is Schmeichel's first save of the game. Schnorr. Burton came from a little deeper, it's Dion Burton! He struggled for goals for Derby since his move from Pompey. But that was Dion Burton in his pomp. Brown lost it to Powell. And now one shot with a genuine chance to run at Manchester United. 
In again to Daryl Powell. Across comes Gary Neville. And with two waiting, Daryl Powell couldn't find either of them. Now one shot for Derby. Ah, a party trick at last. Hasn't really got Derby anywhere though, and if he doesn't dispatch the ball soon, he's going to lose it. Carsley. Dorigo. Faced by Wes Brown. Powell. And there's Burton! Derby are doing it again. They're one of Manchester United's bogey sides. And Dion Burton has struck with 16 minutes to go. The perennial substitute given a rare start and making his mark from Daryl Powell's cross. Schmeichel is asking his defenders who should have been picking Burton up. And they're looking back blankly at him. After the recent glut of goals, United are struggling. Philip Neville. Oh, they've rather left Ryan Giggs. It was deflected, and that's a good stop. Had to get down very quickly to his right, Russell Holt. Making his 100th Premiership appearance for Derby County today. That gum is taking quite a hammering. Mr. Blomquist has impressed since joining from Palmer. And they need him to impress now. Stam to Brown. Any number of players to aim for with the cross. This is Troy. Oh, it's crept in! Jordi Cruyff! A week later, old rivals Leeds United with the visitors. And Ivan Gaskell spoke pre-match to former adversaries from the epic Derby Leeds battles of the 1970s, Norman Hunter and Roger Davis. We had some good battles with Leeds, and that's what they were. They were battles, mm. and there's a lot of players in there with a lot of talent. Uh, but that a lot of players who could look after yourself. And then I said about Norman that I knew if I was in the box and corners were coming over, he's going to give me a dig. The next corner that come back, I'm going to give him one back. But there was no animosity. It was like give and take through 90 minutes. And uh, that's how the game was then, I'm afraid. We've just been discussing the surfaces and the pitches. And in some ways, th those pitches made the games because I'm telling you, you had to be able to play on them. You know, I was sp supposedly a big defender, but. Derby's pitch was probably the worst pitch I've ever played on in my life. And it used to look good, didn't it, Roger? Did, then you'd yeah. walk on it and then gradually you'd sink. And I'm not so it used to be in mud about three or four inches thick. But lucky we had people like Archie Gamble. I mean, he was like five foot nothing. Archie used to skip across the top of it. So right. like, you, used to, you used to see Archie going up and down from one box to the next. And he never seemed to get tired, you know, and we were running around in ankle deep in it. Here we go, getting the ball back again. Oh, not a good connection there. Dorigo on it uh, quickly. That looked like handball. Oh, yeah. Got the Halley. Oh, Sturridge is through and he's brought down. Is it a penalty? They look to referee Barry from Scunthorpe. Well, you could see uh, Molinar's expression there. And it's a penalty for Derby County. Schnorr to take it. 1-0. Three minutes on the clock, what a start for Derby County. The Rams ahead. And they couldn't have asked for a better start. Nice mistake, opening up the way for the uh, penalty. The keeper went the right way, but he couldn't get to it. There we go, hitting it long, Molinar under this one. Nicely flicked on. Fuels away. Oh. Very clumsy challenge from uh, Tony Dorigo. Three kicks being given. Dorigo apologising to uh, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. Now then, can uh, Leeds United fashion something here? Molinar with the header! One more! 16 minutes gone. And Derby County have been pegged back by the man who conceded the penalty for Derby's opening goal. Again by Schnorr. 
Oh, not a bad effort turned away by Holt. And Davido prevents the uh, corner being conceded there. So still 1-1. One, one. Candy coming forward again. Sturridge! Oh, what a beautiful touch with the outside of his right foot. Just couldn't control it enough to put it inside the post. So football being played here. This is Kuehl. Oh, flicked over again by uh, Russell Holt. A couple of minutes to the half-time whistle. Here's Kuehl. Oh, took a deflection and it's bubbled in. Came off Jacob Larson. And Russell Holt could do nothing about it. He was going the other way. And Leeds have stolen the lead. One shot. He's a buzz when he's on the ball, but uh, Molinar got across well. And, uh, back again, Schnoor. Sturridge! Oh yes, look at that big gap, and he made the pay for it. How about that? Derby 2, Leeds United 2, 56 minutes on the clock. was a superb effort nicely played through but look at that turn he turned two defenders opened up the gap and slotted it in beautifully finally injury victim Lee Carsley managed to say something sensible after the game I thought we, um, we deserved to win today we, um, we had a good chance when Dino's um, just hit it wide with the outside of his right foot Dion's had the head at the end so I think um, Leeds will be more happy with the point than we are it's something that we haven't been doing is, is taking the game to, uh, to teams and I thought that today we imposed our game on them and uh, when we do that we're, uh, you know, we're, we're up there with the top six sides. And off down to Anfield with uh, a few suspensions, uh, a few injuries but uh, you know the lads dug together and the manager picked the team. We went out there and we put on a great performance. Uh, we come away with three points after uh, Kevin Harper making his debut, um, scoring, great header and uh, another header from Paolo, which uh, you know, put us in a great lead going into half-time and then uh, we had to hang on in there for the, for the result, which uh, we uh, gladly did. Carragher. Fowler running laterally, but Elliot had a start on him. Berger. It's awkward for him. And Delaps won it back. Here's one chop. One or two gaps appearing, which will encourage Derby. Here's Dion Burton. Ball. And Kevin Harper, the young Scot signed from Hibs only six or seven weeks ago, has marked his first Premiership start with a splendid header to put a makeshift Derby team in front. The cross from Dorigo was inviting, and the header was of high quality, beyond the flailing arms of David James. Six in the box for Liverpool, and they've not picked up the man outside who's Redknapp. And there's Fowler, off the post, and cleared to relative safety by Carbonari. Redknapp, Owen, loves to run at defenders. And then he's played a glorious pass, this is Fowler, and that's a wonderful tackle by Steve Elliott. Delat. Fowler really is working so hard. Ince. No foul. And Ince is off in pursuit of the official to ask why. Or why not. Bahinen. Harper poised, so as not to be flagged offside, and he timed his run well. Burton and Wanchop waiting for the cross, Daryl Powell's arriving as well. Here's De Lapp, and there's Wanchop! A brace of headed goals now for Derby. And you won't see a more classical header than that from the Costa Rican. 
his first goal in seven games and Derby County have scored once here in their last ten visits lead 2-0 as with the first goal it was the quality of the cross that counted this time from Delap and one chops header was majestic Dorigo one shot and that's on for Burton James is out of his goal and timed it well here's one shot anything is possible nothing should be surprising Dorigo some more orthodox oh David James completely lost his bearings. All misjudged by Carbonari. Chance for Fowler! And Russell Holt called into serious action for just about the first time this afternoon. Last time Derby won at Anfield, Jim Smith was only in his 20s. He may even have had hair. McManaman. Tightly marked by Kozluk. And he's escaped from the midst of three Derby defenders. Surely this time for Redknapp. It's 2-1. With six minutes to go. Carbonari. McAteer. Derby desperately need to break the stranglehold. And they just might with Powell. One shot's onside. Oh, first time. The last thing you expected him to do. Jim Smith knows just how close he is to this rare victory at Anfield. Owen. One shot. That's the end. Greeted by boos from the vast majority inside Anfield. But Paolo one shot clinched it with that second headed goal midway through the first half. And Derby record their first win on Anfield turf for 29 years. They inflict Liverpool's first home defeat since February. And in so doing, overtake Liverpool in the Premiership table. And just down the road, we're back to Forest, local derby. Um, I think coming off a, a great win at Liverpool, we're uh, back down to the bit of metal as it is. We need to, a bit of fighting spirit. And we uh, ground out a, a two-all draw. But uh, really, I can't remember too much about it, so there's not really much more point me speaking about it. Stone finding Van Hoydon. It's a good ball too for Friedman. Stone is in a great forward position and he's picked him out. Great save. Still danger. And Stone almost got up off the ground to have a second bite at the cherry. Wonderful, brave anticipation there by Russell Holt. Well, are we going to see a Van Hoydong special here? It's hardly likely, surely, from this position, is it? It is. And it almost produced a goal. Is there another player outrageous enough to try a free kick from there? I'll tell you what, it surprised one or two here and it surprised Russell Holt because he's had to make a fantastic save. He never expected that. It's curling in towards that near post and he just gets his hand to it. In a little trio just around the six-yard box. Prayer got the touch on. Headed back in and off the line. And Hoydon, the man who got it clear. Pumped back in again, but now an offside flag. And Carbonari denied what would have been his first Derby County goal by Van Hoydon's clearance. It's a great flick on from Trout in the near post. Carbonari out jumps Bart Williams. And what's Van Hoydon doing there? Whatever he's doing, he's certainly got himself into the right position. Because on half time, that would have been 1 0 to Derby. Great goal line clearance. fans you can hear making the noise at the moment and I might make more noise now as Sturridge goes forward one chop and Burton ahead of him goes down this time the referee is convinced it is a penalty Bonalair complains but it's too late well he's got nothing to complain about the referee is 100 percent right he loses possession He's always behind him. Sturridge, I think he's waiting for the tackle. It's clever play from Sturridge. 
and there he goes over. Nothing wrong with that. It was definite contact from Bonalaire. And Tony Dorigo could secure his first goal as a Derby County player here from the penalty spot. And has. That'll help the contract talks along very nicely. Derby County in front in the East Midlands Derby. A struck with real confidence, wasn't it? Absolutely no doubt about the penalty. Another driven corner from Stowe. The layoff by Armstrong. Quasi. Had to shoot through the crowd of players. It breaks to Friedman. And he's scored at the second attempt. Dougie Friedman brings Forrest level within two minutes. His corner tries to pick out Van Hoydon, then a total miss kick by Bart Williams. And Quasi again shows the power of his long range shooting. Another corner. Well, they've certainly got the chance to go two on one here. They only bring in Lars Bohinen out. Into that near post. And it's a goal. And Van Hoydon has scored it. Forrest, one down minutes ago, are now in the lead. And Van Hoydon has a very private. Celebration. In fact, the only man who's gone over to him is the scorer of the first goal, Dougie Friedman. Bonalers decided to bury the hatchet. The rest of them looked as though they'd rather bury it in his back. Even though he has just scored the goal, the other players just walked away. We wondered how they'd react, but the fans don't mind at all who got it. And Van Hoydonk is back on the Forest score sheet. That's a clever ball. Rogers. Stone near the penalty spot and he sees him and he almost got there again it was really brave goalkeeping by Russell Holt and he's injured third time in the game he's put his own uh, safety at risk Nottingham Forest 2 Derby County 1 and there's a real problem here for Russell Holt because they seem to have called for the stretcher he hasn't moved and that's always a very ominous sign they do have of course their Second choice goalkeeper as he is now, the Estonian international Mark Porm on the bench. And I fear they might have to use him here. All the signals seem to be that Russell Holt might not be able to continue. Steve Stone, who knows all about injuries himself, will uh, be sympathetic. Well, what a sad moment for Russell Holt, who unexpectedly started the season as first choice. Porm was penciled in for that role, but he got a virus early on. Russell Holt came into the side in his place and played so well in this his fourth season with Derby that he kept his place on merit. And now Paul, who's only three appearances this season of coming the Worthington Cup, has got a chance in unfortunate circumstances for his club mate. But Guides it back to Dorigo. Excellent driven cross. And Paolo Wancho with a chance. And then Carbonari scores. It's 2 2. Well, before that ball came in from the wide area, I just looked to see how many Derby players were in there. It certainly had a good box scene, four players in total. But it's a fair delivery. It comes back early from Dorigo. Pryor gets the first header. One shot really chokes the shot. But once again, it falls conveniently for a Derby player. And Carbonari makes absolutely no mistake. I think it's Bart Williams who's slightly caught ball watching. He's not aware of Carbonari coming in behind him. He reacts too late and it's in the back of the net. Van Hoydonk's lost possession to Bohina. One chop one side of him, Sturridge the other. And here is Sturridge, one chop on the far post. Well, I'm sure he was going for goal. We had a choice in the back stick of one chop in Dion Burton. He's been rather selfish, but that was inches away from the far post. It may even have shaved it. One chop. Burton. 
Powell goes in hard. Stone goes in harder, but it's broken to Sturridge here. And Sturridge has got round the defender. Good save. Dave Besant has protected his team and may have earned them a point with that save. Well, as he thinks about a shot again. Ooh, a hot palm save that with some anxiety. Well, that's either his fourth or his fifth shot tonight. And his whistle brings to an end a hugely entertaining night at the city ground. Whether the managers will agree, we know not. But handshakes from two old pals, two great characters, and honours even in the East Midlands derby. I would get well cards and, and letters and everything from all the fans and, and people like that and phone calls. Uh, the wife weren't too happy because she actually seen me getting put into the ambulance. The cameras were there showing me getting into the ambulance, which I didn't think was too clever, but you know, just put more worry in people's minds because uh, I was actually concussed for five minutes or so and I spent all night in hospital. But uh, I had plenty of time to look at the video and, and watch the game. In many ways, it had been a topsy-turvy start to the 1998-99 season for Jim Smith's Rams. Second place in the table at one stage, their highest position ever in the Premiership, Derby slipped to mid-table after the home defeat by West Ham at the end of November. But they were back to eighth after Carbonari scored the only goal in an away victory at Southampton. Undoubtedly, the passing flair displayed during the previous campaign was not so evident this time around, but the defence looked more solid and in a tight premiership table, the Rams had everything to play for as 1999 beckoned.